And I, you know, I've been working as an environmental advocate and attorney for 40 years for my entire career, but I started out as, a, as an attorney for commercial fishermen on the Hudson River. And we built that organization. We, they launched a patrol boat. They began, these were people who were capitalists. They were small business people and they saw their livelihoods being destroyed uh, by, by uh, pollution on the river. And these were people who, the, the Hudson River commercial fishery is the oldest in North America. It's 350 years old. Many of the people I represent came from families that have been fishing the river continuously since Dutch colonial times. It's a traditional gear fishery. They use the same fishing methods that were taught by the Algonquin Indians to the original Dutch settlers of New Amsterdam and then passed down through the generations. And, uh, and there was nothing wrong with their business model. But the General Electric Company used political clout in Albany to get permission to illegally dump PCBs into the river rather than properly disposing them. And it saved them money. It allowed them to outcompete the other producers of capacitators and to win in the marketplace, but they had distorted the market, the market signals by cheating the market. And these fishermen knew that their problem was not their business model. It was that, the, that the, we didn't have corporate, we didn't have free market capitalism on the river. We had a kind of corporate crony capitalism that was allowing polluters to use political clout to escape the discipline of the free market. Oh, you know, one of the things I learned very early on was that, uh, that good we don't have to choose between good environmental policy and good economic policy. In 100% of the cases, good economic policy is identical to good environmental policy. If we want to measure the economy, and this is how we ought to be measuring it, based upon how it produces jobs and the dignity of jobs over the generations and how it preserves the value of the assets of our community. If, on the other hand, we want to do what the big polluters often want us to do, which is to treat the planet as if it were a business in liquidation, convert our natural resources to cash as quickly as possible, have a few years of pollution-based prosperity, we can generate an instantaneous cash flow and the illusion of a prosperous economy, but our children are going to pay for our joyride. And they're going to pay for it with denuded landscapes, poor health, huge cleanup costs that are going to amplify over time and they'll never be able to pay. Environmental injury is deficit spending. It's a way of loading the cost of our generation's prosperity onto the backs of our children. And, um, you know, my approach has always been colored by my experience. I worked for 40 years for the commercial fishermen and, my, and that really kind of colored my worldview about the environment. And for, if you can go back 35 or 40 years ago and look at speeches that I was giving back then where people would ask me, what's the most important solution, most effective pollution, solution to environmental pollution? And I always said the same thing, it's a free market, true free market capitalism. Because a free market, a true free market, promotes efficiency. And efficiency means the elimination of waste. And pollution is waste. And a, a true free market would require us to properly value our natural resources. And it's the undervaluation of those resources that causes us to use them, uh, them wastefully or recklessly. In a true free market, you can't make yourself rich without making your neighbors rich and without enriching your community. What polluters do is they make themselves rich by making everybody else poor. They raise standards of living for themselves by lowering quality of life for the rest of us, and they do that by escaping the discipline of the free market. You show me a polluter, I'll show you a subsidy. I'll show you a fat cat using political clout to escape the discipline of the free market and force the public to pay its production costs. And what I did as an environmental advocate, I really always considered myself a free marketeer. That I was going out into the marketplace to catch the cheaters 
and to bring them to court and say to them, we're gonna force you to internalize your costs the same way that you internalize your profits. Because as long as somebody can externalize those costs, it distorts the marketplace. And none of us gets the advantages of the efficiency, the prosperity, and the democracy that true free market capitalism offers our country.